what's going on youtube welcome to the channel if you're new to the channel hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the like button and hit the notify button no this is not a tacoma and i know you guys are so used to all the tacoma footage that we always have on the channel uh no need to worry we're still gonna have tacoma footage but you know i uploaded a, a couple videos the other day of uh, me at the dealership uh checking out this car kind of doing a little review on it and uh actually did a test drive I removed it. It wasn't getting much traction. Um, I take it kind of personal, you know, um, sometimes when, you know, I always want my videos to do well and sometimes, you know, they don't. So if I see a video not doing too good or whatever, not getting that many views or whatever, um, I just like just removing. it. I don't like looking at low, low numbers. It's not like it's all about numbers, but, um, you know, I try to take pride in what I do. And, um, for whatever reason sometimes it's just like that you know with the algorithms and stuff like that but uh anyway i decided to go ahead and uh get this car this is a 2022 i wanted to say trd off-road but no it's not a trd off-road it's a 2022 392 in fact um as you guys know if you guys have been kind of listening to whatever the hell i be talking about half the time um i had a, a 2019 dodge charger daytona 392 um, so it was a Daytona, it wasn't a scat pack, but it's technically a scat pack because it has 392. Um, so, um, I had that, had it for almost three years, got rid of it. Um, after just always keeping it in the dungeon, uh, I drive for, for a living for my job. There's the RAV. I got a video coming on the RAV. I kind of did an awkward video of it, uh, the other day. And, um, yeah, it was just kind of awkward because i had the garage closed or i had the garage open and i wasn't kind of like trying to film i didn't want to show you guys the car but um here's the rav this is an awesome car um you guys see i got these little red inserts right here it's the only little uh mod i've done and this is from like massology uh and they're on ebay and they're also on um where's amazon so um i i definitely like the little hint the uh the red um, and they're they're all over in the car even though I got blue stitching I still like the red with the silver um I got them back there as well and they're in all the sides of the sides of the doors so um this rav has just been awesome um like I said I use this for my work for driving and it's just been a great great car I absolutely love it. So if you're in the market for a RAV, a hybrid, this is a 2022. Um, I highly recommend it. Just a beautiful car. Um, gas mileage is awesome. You get about 40 on the freeway and 40 in the city. Sometimes it just drives on electric. Um, you know, just depending on, it goes back and forth between electric and gas. Really no rhyme or reason. You can put it in an electric and just drive if you're going like, I think it's like under 15 miles an hour. So like if you're like stuck in traffic or something. But um, just a great car. This one came from Japan. I haven't really did a review on this one. Um, but um, yeah, I really like driving this car. It's really fun to drive. It's definitely um, really, really nice with that adaptive cruise control. And it's got the um, lane assist too. So it steers for you automatically. If you take your hands off, you can keep your hands off for about 15 seconds or so. I don't know the exact time, but it's a pretty a good amount of time. And then you put them back on and you can take them back off and it steers for you. It doesn't, it doesn't um, exit for you or, you know, switch lanes or anything like that, but it speeds up and slows down for you and uh, it steers. But uh, anyway, so yeah, it's got a sunroof. It's the SE. Um, definitely really, really love this car. Um, yeah, I was involved in it. It has some minor damage, so I had to um had this car in the garage for like two months and couldn't even drive it because i was just waiting for it to get to the body shop so it finally got fixed a couple weeks back and uh man i almost forgot i had this car um but it's just a really really nice car just awesome looking to me this is one of the best looking um uh, what do they call these crossovers i really like this color um you can't really see it i got it parked over here in the shade right now but that metallic it looks really, really nice with all the black accents. Shout out to Gladstone. Um, shout out to Jose. This one came from Japan. So um, this is a really, really nice one. But um, that's really not why we're here. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this bad boy right here. Um, I really like the paint on it. It's kind of hard for it to come up. Um, 
let me get over here and see if you guys can see i kind of brought you guys in too much but it's uh it's like a candy it's got a like metallic flakes in it it's like a candy painted it's like cherry red is what the guy said that's the scat pack that's the rumble b um these are like some huge wheels with like Brimbos, you got the big Brimbos right there. They say SRT on them. Six piston, um, I believe there's six piston right here. It's really interesting brakes in there. Um, definitely different when you got the six piston brakes. These look different. Um, it's like a two piece brake set in there. Um, and these are like 20 by 11. The last wheels I had on the Daytona, it wasn't a wide body and they were 20 by nine. So you get a really, really wide tire. Um, really really wide tire back there um try to get down in there for you stretch my back a little bit but uh yeah it's just funny story about this car it's just like i i initially said no and passed on it i kind of um already had the 392 of 2019 i actually had that one built and uh so yeah these are on 305 35 uh zr20s so that's what it is, 305, 35, 20. Um, and it's got that red interior. So somebody had this car built just like I had my car built. And I guess they just, the Dale fell through or whatever have you. Um, it had like, what did it have when I got it? It's a 2022. So it had 50 miles on it. And I know they have to get it from like the, the dock. So most of that was probably driven from the dock where they get them from the lot to bring them to the dealership we got the kids over there playing drums over there so <laughs> you're gonna hear that in the video but uh we'll keep it kind of short but yeah so this is the scat pack it's the wide body so like i said um initially i said no thought about it um dodge is supposedly stopped making these uh, i guess this is built on like the mercedes benz <laughs> This is built on the Mercedes-Benz platform. An old, the old big body Mercedes. I'm not sure which one it is. I think probably, no, it could be, um, I'd probably say not quite like the 92, like that big S500. I think it might be built on the S, on the S550, especially with these. Um, I know the S550 later on, they came with, uh, well, I don't know what, with the wide body, with these skirts right here on it, because the, the narrow body basically just doesn't have these skirts. They updated the back bumper. Back here, like your diffuser back there has been updated. And then they updated right here the vents as well. It had vents, but they weren't like that. But yeah, so that's basically um, the chassis that they use is the Mercedes-Benz chassis. And then they also updated the grill right up here. So before you had like little snorkels right here that were wide open. And then you had fog lights down here. So you no longer have the fog lights. So you just got this to help. I guess these ones down there are supposed to help keep the brakes cool. And this is all to help keep the engine cool, all the vents and everything. And unlike our, our Toyota Tacomas, that is a functional hood scoop. Um, uh this like like what i've always said about the toyota tacomas i wish they had like so you can see they got the vented seats here so they got vented and heated seats and just even in the back i mean i know our tacomas aren't that big but you do have heat back there and you also got heated seats and you got a couple usb ports back there um this one came equipped with a sunroof definitely something that um that I have to have. So if it wouldn't have had a sunroof, it probably would have been a um, a no-go for me. But um, like I said, I initially said no. Um, I wasn't too sold on the color. And I definitely like the color a lot better when it's like directly in the sun or at night where you can see it uh, like underneath the light or something. And I wasn't even sold on the wheels at first. I like the wheels. I wish the, uh, the brakes like on mine, the 2019 on the Destroyer, it was actually Destroyer Gray. If you look at my earlier videos when I was getting no traction, probably do the same thing on this video. I won't get no traction unless I put something interesting in the title for you guys to watch. Um, but yeah, um, they were red. So you had the Destroyer Gray and black, and then you had the red 
um, Brembo's, which were just the same size as the ones in the back. They were just the four, four pistons. So they weren't that big. So you can see how much smaller these ones are in the back, but they were red and it really made it pop. And it seems like right after that, like um, that was an option that I had put on there from when I had the car built. Right after that, I seen a lot of people going to putting red on the wheels. Not saying that I started it because obviously I copied somebody else off of YouTube with the chargers. They had the red, but that was an option. So I picked it, it was like 500 bucks and I picked the red Brembo's. I'm not sure how this would have looked with the red ones. It probably would have looked good because you see the 392 right there um, that's red. So they're basically that color. Um, but um, one thing, uh, the reason why I got this car, so you guys know I'm waiting on the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. Um, it's supposed to be basically, um, I talked to the guy today, called, called up Jose today, and it's supposed to be there probably, we're expecting it, um, you know, maybe a, a month or so. He said maybe a couple more weeks. So it's with the rundown, a few more weeks. So it's still in processing. So once we get an ETA, we're basically looking at a few weeks out. So um, the reason why I got this car was um, I wanted a wide body. Um, they were definitely hard to find. Um, at the time I was talking with a dealership here in my, in my town and they were like, uh, yeah, they had one at one point and it was like, oh, it's the one of, he was telling me it was one of only in the, in the, in the country. There wasn't very many of them. Blase, blase. And, um, that's what he said. Sorry about that. But, uh, that's what he said. So, um, I wasn't really, when I had the 2019, uh, I didn't really like the white bodies at first because I got mine in 20, I got my car in 2019 in July. And like four months later, they had the wide bodies coming out. And I was just like, man, they actually kind of grew on me and I liked it a lot better. And I was just like, sheesh, I want a wide body kind of, you know? And then I was like, well, it doesn't really make much sense. I already have the same motor. And I liked the Daytona package that I had with the um, Destroyer Gray, cause that was the last year that they made them. They actually went to a smoke show after that. So um, I was really, really like kind of how I got into the Tacomas. I kind of did a lot of research on these cars on the Daytonas. Like I can't really tell you much stuff, but basically thank God that this is pretty much the same car as I had besides it being um, being uh, a wide body. And it's got the bigger wheels on it, bigger tires. So it's got some upgrades to things I didn't have, the bigger brakes. Um, I can already show you the scat pack on the seats, the Alcaterra with the leather trim there, vented seats. It's got the heated steering wheel. Um, so it's got line locks, so where you can actually set up here, you can push a button and it locks the front wheels and you can just burn rubber. And it's also got launch control, uh, 485 um, horsepower. Um, and see the Daytona actually had a cold air intake, a factory, factory one, a functional one, right? And um, that actually worked. So I think that might've had a, few, a little bit more horsepower, but it was a narrow body. And uh, anyway, so that's a little bit of kind of a history on this car. Um, so the person who ever got it, they had his name on it. So um, the prices have increased since 2019. Um, at the time when I got my car in 2019, the uh, Daytona package on the 392 was basically the biggest package you could get. Um, what this car doesn't have, it doesn't have, um, uh, what are, we were, I was just talking about it with the RAV, um, um, cruise control, adaptive cruise control. So if it would have had adaptive cruise control, you would have had a camera down there in the front, like a big boxy looking camera down there. So it doesn't have that. And it does have the upgraded suspension because it's a wide body. So. My car didn't have adaptive cruise control either. So this guy had it built. Um, so anyway, back to what I was kind of saying. So 2023 is supposed to be the last year. I guess they're calling these cars L cars. I just I just kind of heard that term today as I was watching YouTube. And uh, basically um, Dodge in 2023 says this is 2023 will be the last year that they're going to make the, um, you know, the 392 or the, yeah, the 392 engines, the Hemi and even the 5.7, I guess in the chargers and challengers and no more 6.2s so that goes for your hellcats and your durangos um they already stopped making their track hawk and i guess they might still be making the trx in 2024 that's what i heard so that that one might not be um discontinued as of right now but supposedly dodge is supposed to be not making these anymore i don't really believe it i kind of feel like as you guys know in the last couple of years with everything They've, I think people have been taking advantage. I mean, and I don't, you know, 
I don't really necessarily blame them to a certain extent because I, I understand about free enterprise and people want to make their money. And, you know, I feel like if you buy something, um, don't jump on the car, Cody. I feel like if you buy something um, and you want to sell it down the road or whatever you want to do, you can almost name your price. But I don't feel like I don't feel happy about markups. You know, I don't I don't feel like dealers should be marking up vehicles for extra amount of money. I feel like if they got options or something like that, they should um, let the customer decide if they want that. And they should just take a sale and be happy with that. Because my philosophy is like, I've been in sales my whole life. And my philosophy about sales is just like, you know, you wanna be a respectable salesperson. You know, you wanna be truthful, you wanna be honest. And I guess sometimes like that hasn't been the case you know, I mean, that's been the case with me when I've been dealing with the dealerships that I go to, like the ones that I like, Toyota, um, out there in Gladstone. They've just been awesome people. They've been good to me, um, and they've been nice folks. They haven't been shysty, trying to get over on me, like the salespeople that I've been dealing with. But, you know, they do, um, you know, sometimes offer markups, you know, or whatever. I mean, it's just all the dealerships, not all of them, but a lot of them, you know, and it's just always, you know, something associated with dealerships, whether they're not doing markups, they're just, you know, they're known to do kind of shicey stuff from time to time. But I look at it like this, dealerships are just like regular people, right? There's good people, there's bad people, there's people that's gonna try to, you know, make a little bit of extra money and whatnot. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, I kind of feel like Dodge is kind of like um, taking advantage of a situation and maybe just trying to say, hey, we're not gonna make these. I mean, I'm not sure what their sales are. I'm not, I'm not, you know, going like that. I know they're they're really pushing EVs and that's their whole thing. In 2024, they got their big charger EV, their two-door, you know, charger SRT. Um, I don't know what the heck they call that thing. Um, with the fake exhaust and blase blase. And so they're kind of telling everybody, get your order in for 2023. So this all kind of ties into that too. So now they're telling people go order 2023. This is going to be your last chance to get the car. So when you tell people this is your last chance, basically, um, or you're not going to be able to get one. So that's going to create people to go out and want to buy one, right? It's what it did for me, you know? So it's kind of like FOMO, fear of missing out. So I was hearing all that, that they're going to stop making them. And, you know, I really wanted a wide body. I mean, heck, I really wanted a Hellcat, but you know, we can't afford no, I can't afford no Hellcat. So it's like, I mean, I would have loved to have a supercharger, 707 horsepower. I mean, that's what I would love. I mean, they're just super duper expensive. And as I said, everything has gotten expensive over the last couple of years since the pandemic and stuff with shortages, the chip shortage. So my thinking is like, I don't know, you know, because they said Motor Trend was saying that they are still gonna make them. They're, you know, they're still gonna make the 392 or, you know, they're not done with the Hemis. It's just gonna be done in this platform. And a lot of people are um, speculating that they're gonna use the Hurricane, which is a V6. It's gonna have more horsepower. Oh, the Banshee is the name of that, um, the new SRT Banshee electric. You know, it's a concept car. So I would like to see if they are gonna have that, bring that to market by 2024. And my guess is if they are able to bring a vehicle like that, it's supposed to have 10 different um, power options two EVs is what they're saying. So maybe a V6, who knows, maybe a Hemi, you know, um, I, I, you know, I was listening to watching Racer X and all those guys, you know, uh, uh, I watched a couple other guys, Hemi, Hemi something and the 360 knockout or whatever. Um, you know, I was Benny, um, I was watching Benny. Benny is who got me started. Uh, I can't think of Benny, Benny something, but he used to have the 392 and, um, he was the one who I really watched all my 392, who I got all my stuff from, who kind of looked at, you know, got me really going with the chargers. And he, uh, he kind of went away from the charger. He doesn't have a charger anymore. So he kind of went to doing different videos. So which also brings up another point before I'll get to that point in one second, though. Hopefully I'll, I'll remember to get back to that. But um, so I just think that, you know, they could be saying, hey, we're going to end these so they can get the boost their sales up. As you guys know, um, it's been a tough time for you know people in America right now with the gas prices being really, really high over the past six months, seven, eight months, maybe maybe a year now it's been, they've been pretty, pretty high and getting high. And now it seems like they might've taken a little bit of a dip. And you know, California is talking about, they want all, they want, they're gonna stop selling new gas powered vehicles within like 10 years or something. And then Washington has now recently jumped on board 
Well, at the same time, California right now is telling their residents not to use the electric if they don't have to, unless it's for an emergency until nine o'clock. I don't know how the grid's gonna be, you know, hold up. Um, I'm all for electric cars, especially when I drive for a living. It's definitely an option that I would like to look into. And I mean, I'm already looking into it. So, I mean, um, I'm just gonna throw it out there. This has kind of been, I am looking to get a Tesla. I've already put a deposit down for a Y performance model. So, um, yeah, I'm driving my wife crazy pretty much. I can tell you that much with, with all these cars and, you know, trying to get the Tacoma, trying to get a Tesla. And um, this just kind of came out of nowhere. Like this was not really expected. I was looking for these. Like I said, you really couldn't even find one on the lot. Um, I heard the news. I kind of looked out and was just looking around and then came up on this one. They didn't even actually have the right color on their website. Um, shout out to these guys, to Northwest Jeep and Dodge. Um, shout out to Wayman. And uh, anyway, I called them up. Like I said, I wasn't really... Um, Looking to really get one, I went up there, looked at it, test drove it, it was awesome. Wasn't really sold on the color, wasn't really sold on the wheels, which I like both of right now. And um, yeah, so I ended up getting it. Um, they had a great deal for me. I got this vehicle for MSRP, um, which is, I hate to say it now, MSRP nowadays is a great deal considering all the markups and blase this and blase that. So MSRP nowadays is a good deal. Um, they actually took off a thousand bucks because uh, Dodge has an um, incentive right now where they're taking off a thousand bucks. Um, I wish, I wish they could have took off a little bit more. Um, but yeah, you know, initially, like I said, um, I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna end this video real quick. But I really wasn't sold. Um, I told him no initially um, that I didn't want to get it. After everything went through, I said I'm just gonna pass. I decided to go to not do it. And then um, I slept on it and thought about it and, you know, FOMO kicked back in, fear of missing out. My wife hates when I say that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I never say it really. But uh, I decided to go ahead and get it. And like I said, it's kind of out of nowhere. And um, so I decided to get it. But I just kind of think I don't know what Dodge is up to. I guess only time will tell. Um, but what I will say is, like I said, I'm all for the electric vehicles. But there's nothing like an exhaust and 485 horsepower it's nothing like a gas engine or as people want to call them an ice engine there's nothing like with this this exhaust is just amazing i can't even tell you how much torque because i don't it's a lot of torque on this car but i i just love the 485 uh horsepower um definitely love that and uh anyway so back to the channel so i can't think of his name it's benny something or whatever but you can look him up he's got some great videos great content great guy and uh, I actually was talking to him, uh, messaged him a few times on, the, on there, talking about starting a channel. I actually started the channel um, back when I had the car. It was kind of pretty boring because I wasn't doing any mods and it was just like a car that I had built. And I was just like, here it is. I didn't take people out and drive in it and, and do any of that cool stuff. And was just kind of just walking around and I really wasn't saying much. But um, so what I will say is like I mentioned, I deleted a couple of videos and I've done that in the past too. Um, just wasn't getting a lot of traction so hopefully you guys will check out this video um and just uh you know i do plan on keeping the toyota um, tacoma content i definitely want the pro definitely still waiting on that and just kind of seeing what's gonna happen um kind of all over on the place with these cars so i'm basically gonna have to decide because i can't keep them all i'm just not rich like that um people was calling me um untamed too but no untamed is doing big things i'm not doing big things like that that's for sure so i won't be able to hold on to all of these vehicles but i'm gonna have to choose be so basically you know um in the process of trying to figure out what's going on with this because it was involved in an accident it was a small minor accident they got it all fixed up can't even tell but um like i said if i can go um all electric for my job that would be awesome because then i can eliminate oil changes brakes I do a lot of driving and um, so I just definitely want to give that a shot. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what's what's going on with all of this stuff. So we got a lot of moving parts and it's going to be interesting and um, to see what we decide. But I, yeah, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, pass up on this opportunity, unfortunately, to get another Hemi. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the thing with this so i uh grew up as a kid and lots of big old school cars that i had and family members had and 
you know, V8s and stuff and always liked the fast, you know, V8s horsepower trying to build vehicles, put motors in, exhaust, you know, flow masters and um, hearing the stories that my uncle used to tell me about all the cars from the, the 60s and the 70s when they had the big engines in there. And there was a guy with like a um, next door just had one of those. It was like a charger. It wasn't, it wasn't, a, I think it was like, um, it was like a Chrysler or something, but it was like a GTX or something like that. It was just, he had it in his, we were kids. I was like five years old. He had the car covered up for like 20 years. And um, like after they moved out of this house, and I guess this car, it was like a Roadrunner type of GTX type of, you know, one of those type of cars. And it was like thousands, worth thousands and thousands of dollars after it had never even been touched. Like he had, it was like an original car that was just covered up for 20 years with just this, a car cover on it. Just like the car just sitting there. And it's like some people like, it was right around in the nineties, kind of like when they had the big boom with the big uh, tech tech boom up in Seattle. I'm from the central district up there in Seattle. Um, so yeah, some, some startup people moved in the neighborhood, you know, from, you know, Microsoft and all that. And I think they bought the car and Next thing I know, I heard the car was going for like 20, 30,000 bucks, which was pretty, actually pretty cheap back then, considering probably what that thing was worth. But, um, so I've always had a fascination with, um, muscle cars and just having a really, really, um, you know, muscle cars putting engines in. I've had a couple El Caminos. I've had some Caprices, um, where I put in, um, you know, put in, had whole motors put in and, um, transmissions and exhaust and stuff like that, trying to get some horsepower out of them. And they were a lot of incomplete projects, basically. So when you can get something like this, I was just looking at the motors you can buy for the Hellcat motors. I think they were roughly like 20 something thousand dollars. I'm like, that's a lot cheaper than getting one of these cars. Maybe I should have went that route. But um, yeah, when you, when you get a vehicle like this, it's, everything's already done. And I actually like the bodies a lot. Um, I first initially fell in love with the Challenger. That's what I've always wanted was a Challenger. Um, wasn't really a fan of the Charger, to be honest, when it first came out the four door. I just, it just wasn't, I didn't think it looked that good because I grew up watching, you know, I watched the Dukes of Hazards. I mean, I was a kid, I watched Knight Rider. I just like cars. So I didn't really, you know, I won't get all political. And, you know, I was like in fifth grade when my friends like, you watch the Dukes of Hazards, dude. And he was a white kid. He's telling me, yeah, they got a Confederate flag on it. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know nothing about all that. I, you know, I knew all about, you know, I know I'm all about, you know, the black people, my black folks, cause I'm, I'm black Chinese and native American. Most people see me and just think I'm black. So I know all about the struggle and the civil rights and I'm all about that. And um, so I always knew my history, civil wars type stuff and, and knew all that. But um, I never really put two and two together. And I grew up in the central district of Seattle, which was predominantly black neighborhood and was raised by my grandmother and my uncles. And I watched that show faithfully. I mean, they got me toys as a kid, you know, the Hot Wheels, you know, the Hot Wheels car, you know, with the Confederate flag on it. Nobody never said anything. So, um, so I'm just like, but whatever, and you know, the um, climate that we're in now, but uh, anyway, so um, yeah, I never really liked the Charger because of that reason alone right there, because it was a, the, the General Lee was a two-door. I love the heck out of that car. I mean, I still get me a General Lee. I wouldn't care. Give me the <laughs> Confederate flag in anyway, but I love the two-door Charger. So I was like, when it came out with a four-door, I wasn't happy with too much with the way the, the first generation Charger looked. I absolutely love the Challenger. So I was confused. Like, I didn't know the difference between Charger and Challenger. I was confused the whole time because I was like, it's supposed to be the opposite way around or isn't it, you know? But anyway, when I finally started really liking the Charger was, I was on the freeway one time. I was in my Caprice Classic and this guy was in a Charger and like, I didn't even know nothing about the Hemis or nothing. And he just hit it. He just punched it and he was out of there. And it was my first time seeing, that was like the fastest car that I had seen just take off like that on the freeway. And this was like one of the first gens. So I know he had a Hemi up in it and um, he was gone. And I was like, dang, those cars are fast. And then, um, but that was it. I still didn't really like the body. I just gave them their props for being a fast car. I didn't still like the body. I didn't like this body until 2019. And this is like a similar story with the Tacoma. When I seen the Daytonas, which was a 5.7, I test drove a 5.7. And like I said, I was always trying to get cars with 350 in it. Not even necessarily have 350 horsepower but just a 350 Chevy 350 motor in it. You know, if it's a 350, it's gonna go. So I had some Buicks. My first car was a Buick Electra. It had a 455 in it. So, you know, my second car was a, um, was a Buick Skylark 350. I was doing donuts in that. I was doing burnouts in the 455 Buick Electra two door. 
car was as long as a block. Um, literally got the car for like under 200 bucks. Guy just wanted it out of his driveway. That's when you could go look for a car in a newspaper. You know, so I've been, you know, I've been a car person, a car guy my whole life. I had a lot of raggedy cars. You know, my first new car was in 2018. And you know, that was the first brand new car I had ever purchased. I had a lot of cars that I was always trying to fix up and just, I had a lot of nice cars, but they were old cars, you know, so nothing was never new. So I had a few really, really nice cars that I actually came across that were old and that were well taken care of. And then, you know, I did something stupid to them or, you know, try to do too much to them. So yeah, that's just kind of where we are. So I've always kind of had a passion for cars. I remember, you know, walking home from school and I, you know, I don't even think I was 16 yet. I'd be dang near driving home a car that I seen in a used car lot trying to get my mom to help me buy it, you know, with no money or nothing. And, uh, you know, I must've had my license obviously, but um, yeah, just the cutlasses and stuff. I just liked the old cars. I like the smell of them and it's nostalgia, you know, back in high school. So, um, so yeah, so back to what I was trying to say about this body style. So 2019, it was a 5.7 Daytona. I didn't even know the difference between the 5.7 and the 392 at the time. Now I drove the 5.7. And um, I was trying to get this car. It was crazy interest rate. The car was ridiculously overpriced. It was brand new. Actually, the first color that I picked was like this color and it was a Daytona. It was this color. And like I said, I think again, um, it wasn't very clean. So I didn't really like this color. Like I still, I only like this color when you can see those flakes in it. Cause it's, other than that, it's kind of like a maroony looking thing. And I'm not too sold on the maroon thing. Um, I do like when it shines though. Uh, when it sparkles when you see that metallic or at night so anyway i didn't like that color so i was like oh, i can't do this color so they had the blue one it was the b5 it was the b5 i believe is the color and um i got in that thing and i drove it and it was the daytona it's got the you know i'm pretty sure it had the cold air intake in it and i got got on it it was big comfortable seats i drove that thing and i just thought it was i thought it was awesome and it got up and it got up and it had power I was happy with the power on that, just like I say with the Tacoma, right? So I'm test driving and everything. And now I hear a lot of people talking bad, like on a couple of the YouTube channels that I hear, but I hear people talking bad about the 5.7, but I'm like, you know, to, to the where the point was when I drove my first 392, which was a, um, you know, I drove, a, I think I might've drove a couple, but the first brand new one that I drove before I got my Destroyer Grade, they had that uh, sub, sublime lime color. And I had just came out of a purple Mustang 5.0, five speed manual, and this, this thing had everything. It was candy painted purple, convertible. It had headers, it had a chip in it. This car moved. It came with gold Dayton's, real deal Dayton's that I had got from a buddy, I was going through some hard times. And um, I happened to have a little bit of cash and was able to um, get the car from him. Long story short, so I had been having this purple Mustang for several years and I just couldn't have another bright car. So I got in this 392 so, um, Sublime, um, green thing and it had it was the Daytona as well I believe it was a day I don't even think it was a Daytona I think it was just a scat pack because it had stripes on it and everything and I test drove it and I was like huh I don't know I don't know what it was about it it was brand new it didn't have any miles on it and it felt like that 5.7 just felt a little bit better you know for whatever reason I don't know if it was the way it seemed like it was the hesitation with the 392 at first so I was like huh I wasn't too sold, you know? It's like, well, I seemed like, you know, I think maybe the problem was because I had drove that 5.7 for the first time and I was so infatuated with the car and I really wanted it and liked it. And I hadn't had that type of power before. I was just like, wow, this is it. So when I drove the other car, I was like, uh, I think I like the 5.7 better. So anyway, what I'm saying, shout out to everybody with those 5.7s out there. Don't jump up on this car, Sam. You gotta keep these guys off the car because they be going from the litter box outside and scratch your whole car up. But anyway, so um, shout out to everybody with five sevens because those things get up and move. Great exhaust and the Daytona was awesome. I'm gonna hurry up and finish this video. But uh, yeah, so anyway, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna back to the whole thing. I don't want you guys to not watch these videos. Um, so we still gonna keep Toyota content. I absolutely still love the Toyotas. Um, you know, it's just a lot going on right now. And this is one of those things I might have to make a decision because I've had two Tacomas, you know. Um, and you know the 2022 20, um year you know and just like just like that then you know the third gen they're pretty much going to be done with those after this year so we got one more year coming up the 2023s and um yeah so you know i'm gonna have to make a decision here uh to what we're gonna do and i'm just playing it by ear at this point and i'm gonna have to choose something